OK, hello and welcome again to the second lecture uh, of compiler optimization. Uh, I'm here with the internet sensation that is Pavlos Petermanos. Woohoo! Hello. How are you dealing with the fame and fortune, Pavlos? Uh, it's fine. It hasn't changed me, really. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm the, still the same old Pavlos you used to know. <laughs> Excellent. That's very good to know. OK, so today we are going to be talking about the coursework that you guys have to do. Uh, so... Um, just a few notes on this. So this accounts for 25% of your course mark. Uh, the due date for this is the 23rd of February 2017. By the way, if you are in 2018, you are probably looking at the wrong piece of coursework. Uh, but for those of you, make sure you get it in on time uh, in week six because there are penalties for late submission. I have no idea how stringent those penalties are or whether you get any marks at all. But there are penalties, so do not be late. I will give you feedback on this stuff. I'll, in the lecture, probably take you out one at a time and uh, talk to you about what, you, what your work has uh, done, uh, uh, what the sort of pros and cons were, and why you got the marks that you got. Uh, and that'll be on the 9th of March. Um, we use plagiarism software, so do not copy stuff off other people. Plus, as well, I'm going to be reading each one of these things, and there aren't that many of you that I'm not going to be able to tell whether you've plagiarized it off somebody else. So don't do that, please. It's amazing how every time somebody does something like this and they always get caught. Right. Uh, OK, so this is a very long piece of coursework, not for, the, not for the humans, but for the computers. It takes a lot of compute power. It might take a couple of weeks. So if you start this late with a few days to go and think, ah, oh, it'll be fine, uh, it's not going to be fine. Uh, you will fail to be able to do it in time. And for the last two times that we've run this piece of coursework, there were several people who basically got zero marks. Uh, do not be one of those people. So start it the moment you have got this uh, coursework, uh, once you've read about this or heard about this, start it immediately. Pelos, you always started all your coursework in very good time, didn't you? I remember, it was decades ago. <laughs> good. <laughs> OK. But I, I'm, I'm sure you did, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. Yeah, right. It wasn't like I decided the last night before the deadline to start working on it and <laughs> spent the whole night... So you didn't do that when you were a, when you were a student. Why the hell are you doing it now? <laughs> All right. So what is this coursework? Well, we are going to be asking you to do something called iterative compilation. Now, uh, Pavlos, you've used GCC before and other compilers, I assume as well. Uh, yeah. Not for so, anything useful. Yeah, but, a, few, uh, a few times. Yeah, a few times. Okay. So you know, Pavlos, that there are uh, compiler options where you do things like I want to optimize this program, and you mm. give it minus O three as a flag, and the compiler is supposed to go away and optimize mm. the hell out of it for you. Did you know, Pavlos? that there are lots of compiler flags that aren't included in minus O3. Uh, what's the correct answer here? The, the correct answer is yes, you. I did know that. Well, you can do whatever yes, you like. Yes, you. I didn't know that. <laughs> did, did you know that? <laughs> do you know how many there are, Belvis? Uh, I don't know. A few hundred? Yeah, there's more than 100. The entire space of them is more than... If you look at the, how they combine with each other, you get a space that is at least 10 to the 400 uh, and probably larger than that if you make the space a little bit larger. So there's a huge search space of these options. And it turns out that the options that you get with GCC with its default minus 03 are not necessarily the best ones for your program. And in fact, if you judiciously choose the right compiler options, you may find that it does a lot better. You know uh, loop and rolling powers? Yeah. What is that? It's when you take a loop and you unroll it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that eminently clear and helpful uh, or observation. You, on you, or you take an unroll and you loop it. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, I, I knew the beer before we started these uh, lectures was not going to be, before we started these videos was not going to be a good idea. Why would I do loop and rolling? Uh, so the idea is that you... Especially if you have a very tight loop, you will spend a lot of your time just executing branch instructions. And sort of testing, have I got to the end of the loop, branch yeah. back to the beginning, yeah? So instead of doing that, you just put multiple copies of the body of the loop. Yep. If you know that you're not going to take the branch. Yep. Uh, if you know, more, more correctly, if you know that you're not going back to the beginning of the loop, if you know... If you know that you're going to do a few iterations, if you, know, you can bunch all yeah. those iterations up together and do them in a burst. So, for example, if you have to do 100 iterations of a loop, yeah. instead of doing 100 iterations, you do, let's say, 10 iterations of 10 copies yes. of the body. Okay. And uh, the other thing it would do, other than just removing these, uh, these, these bits for doing the jump and the, com the compare and jump, uh, is that you will also potentially allow more opportunities for the compiler to optimize and to schedule the instructions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there are downsides. Are there downsides? Yeah. What are those? Uh, I'm so, am I supposed to know? Do you not know? I know. All right, tell me them what they are. So uh, one big disadvantage is that uh, your loop body might get uh, too large, too long. Yeah. 
uh, in which case it might not fit on the same cast line. Yep, so now your instruction cache is blown out. And yeah. All slows down. You eventually end up running out of cache and having to spool stuff back in from memory all the time. Yeah, and if you do it for all the loops in your program, then you will certainly run out of uh, cache space. Quickly. Okay, so that's one thing. Any others? Uh, any others? Um, so... You might increase register pressure. There's a bunch of other yeah. stuff that you can do, right? But that's that's a, that's a general idea. So sometimes loop unrolling is enormously beneficial, and sometimes it sucks really hard. Okay, and a whole bunch of other optimizations like this, where sometimes they work and sometimes they won't, because just because just just because something is called an optimization in a compiler doesn't mean it's guaranteed to make your code better. Unfortunately, mm. so a lot of these optimizations optimizations are made available, and it's up to the the developer to choose whether or not to use them. Right? The compiler writers say, "Ah, we don't know." whether it's the right thing to use for your code, so you work it out for yourself. Big pardon. So what we're essentially going to do is we're going to search for the best compiler flags for your program, and we are going to try to improve beyond what uh, GCC's minus 03 gives you. Okay? Make mm -hmm. sense? Yeah. All right. And we're hoping that this can produce some significantly better performance in our code. So, okay, so this is the general structure of how iterative compilation works and how our search is structured. So uh, we start with our program over here, Ooh, uh, over the, there, this bit here, right? <laughs> okay, uh, and we shove it into our compiler uh, over here, um, which is GCC, but we are going to give it a set of compiler flags that we wanted to use. Now, GCC will compile this down to an executable for us, which we're then going to run on the machine, which will give us, uh, which we then time to find out how long that program took to run. And we shove this execution time and the set of options back into some kind of search engine, which is going to try and find the best set of compiler flags by repeatedly trying different flags until it gets the best result over here. Okay, and we report the best thing that we've managed to be able to, the best way we've managed been able to compile this program. Okay. Yep. Easy? Okay. A couple of things to watch out for is that uh, compilers don't like this very much. So it turns out that even though they publish the list of acceptable compiler flags that you may have for your for your compiler, uh, when you try random compiler flags, throwing them in, um, you can very quickly break the compiler. So there are a bunch of different ways that the compiler can break. You probably know all these. Um, no? no? Do you know any of these? How can, no. how can it go wrong? How can iterative compilation go wrong? Uh, ah, okay. You don't, you don't mean specific uh, couples of options that might break the... Oh, well, there is that. Okay, so yes, you can put in options that just never work, right? Yeah. Okay, but no. So, yeah, the way it can break is, first of all, the compiler might just uh, uh, just break and uh, quit before producing the program. Yeah, okay, it's a segmentation fault type yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, the other way it might go wrong is if it creates a binary that doesn't even run. A binary that doesn't run, yes. Okay, that's one. And uh, it might produce a binary that appears like it's running, but produce the uh, wrong results. Yes, very upsetting, that. Yeah. Uh, I think that's all. We've also got ones where the compiler never finishes, mm -hmm. right? uses all the memory in the machine, particularly if you start playing with parameters and you say, mm -hmm. uh, you know, deal with very large problems for this MP hard problem, and then it will use a huge amount of memory, and you'll come back two weeks later, and it's, you know, it was doing fine, and then it hit this one point in space, and it never gets any further, right? So you need to watch your iterative compilation to make sure it's behaving well. Yeah, don't okay? just leave your iterative compilation running and go away for and a couple of weeks. And expect to come back and have it done. Or at least, if you are going to do that, make sure you have dealt with some automatic mechanism to kill programs that are running too long. Um, okay, so that's that's another way. So what have we got so far? We've got, we've got segmentation force, we've got the compiler never finishing, right? Yeah. We've got the compiler produces a program which never finishes, mm -hmm. right? Even though the original one did. That's quite annoying. We've got a compiler which produces a program which segmentation faults when mm -hmm. the original didn't. One which produces different results. And we've also got a disturbing extra class of things where the program doesn't report all of the results that enable you to tell doesn't the output of the program doesn't let you necessarily discover that it's not doing anything anymore. So I have had the case where you've put in certain compiler options and uh, you just record the time that it takes for it to run and you, you go, oh my God, I've made a 100,000% performance improvement. <laughs> and it turns out what it's done is it's taken out the whole of Maine and so that your program, which was doing, I don't know, M-body problems or something like that, is now just doing uh, void Maine return one, right? <laughs> and you feel like you've got an amazing speed up, but actually you've just entirely broken the program. So a bunch of things to watch out for. You must check these errors because uh, you could find that you produce 
apparently very good results otherwise. OK. Oh, one other thing to note. Uh, when you run these things, when we get these execution times, right? Pavel, is the execution time of a program the same every time you run it? Uh, not exactly. Why not? There is noise. There is measurement noise because the machine you're using is doing other th things also. How dare it? Uh, so some other programs might start running in the background while you're running yours. So that will affect uh, your program's runtime. And even if you haven't got your own applications that you've set even, going, the, the operating system is doing stuff in the background it, as well, right? Yeah, the operating system is doing stuff. And these days it even gets more complicated because... Uh, the schedule, the operating system might uh, change the where your program is running in random ways, which might affect its runtime, uh, or it might change the operating frequency of the processor. Operating frequency is a bad one, right? Particularly if you're running yeah. something hard, it looks like it's doing really well because it's running at a high frequency, and then it hits a thermal limit and it starts dropping the frequency, yeah. and now your program takes longer to run, which is very upsetting, right? Okay, so a whole bunch of things that can change the runtime measurements that you yeah. get and you have to be aware of this if you don't take take care of these things then you'll get spurious measurements and you'll start measuring the wrong thing yeah you have to eliminate as many as possible and for those you cannot eliminate you have to do what uh well you have to uh, do some statistical techniques uh -huh. to remove the noise yes yes okay so Pavel, do you get all this does this does this little this little diagram make sense to you does this does this look like your version of uh interest compilation what's going on in yeah your yeah head? yeah, yeah. it's beautiful isn't it it's very easy it's what 20 lines of code i guess yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay right. fine fine okay so what is the goal of this project so what you are going to do is you're going to try different compiler optimization settings on a set of benchmarks and you're going to try to beat minus 03 and then you are going to write a very interesting report that I very fortunately am going to have to read uh, to discuss your findings and your methodology and so forth. OK, now what we're going to describe here is the kind of the basic setup. This this project is actually quite easy to do for the basic stuff. So what we're going to describe here is essentially the kind of thing you will do to get uh, a pass in this. And then we'll be hoping for you to do some more interesting things that you can think of, which we may discuss some possibilities of those toward the end of this. Right. If you want to get higher marks. OK, not everybody wants to get higher marks. Do you want to get higher marks? You don't care. Do no, you? it's overrated. Yeah, you, you just just a just a straight pass will do. Right. <laughs> OK. Right, so uh, program optimization in GCC. GCC has some uh, default levels of optimization. So minus O zero is do not optimize me at all. Often you use this when you're debugging your program because it's the easiest way to find out uh, what your program is supposed to be doing. Um, minus O one does some optimizations that uh, are quick to run. Uh, minus O two does optimizations that are supposed to be guaranteed to improve the performance of your program. Minus O three includes some optimizations which may hurt the performance of your program if you're not lucky. So uh, you sometimes might actually make it worse by running minus O three. These are called aggressive optimizations. And then there are a whole set of other optimizations that aren't even included in these, which may be aggressive or may be just not worth doing because they maybe only work in a few in a few uh, cases. So at each level, there are a different set of optimizations enabled. Uh, the numbers here may be, um, may be old. I don't know. It might, be, it might be that somebody hasn't looked at uh, what's inside GCC for some time. Uh, so take these with a pinch of salt. But um, at higher levels, there are uh, more optimizations enabled, which uh, can potentially run in faster code, but may also slow down the compilation process and also may not like, uh, make uh, faster code. OK. Uh, so rather than using these predefined sets, we're going to enable the individual optimizations themselves, and you're essentially going to randomly choose optimizations to apply. You're also going to, to add some others, for example, minus F unroll loops, which is not included in it's so it can be so damaging that it's not included in any of these, right? My recollection is at least it hadn't used to be, right? So that you need to explicitly ask for loop unrolling to work because minus O3 doesn't do it by default. Okay? Uh, and you can find a list of all these optimizations at this address that's down here. Uh, where is it? And at least in the PDF version of these notes, it's probably clickable. Uh, but in this one, it isn't clickable. Um, OK, obviously, because it's a library, uh, a video. All right. So uh, you will probably want to go and look through and find out what these optimizations actually are. Make sure that you always include minus 03 on the command line, uh, because some optimizations, like, for example, Unroll loops will not work if you don't have minus O3 set. Okay, at least again, this used to be the case. I'm not entirely sure whether it still is, but make sure you always include minus O3. And you're going to randomly turn flags on and off. Now you'll find when you look at the doc documentation that you can turn a flag off by using minus F no and then whatever it is, 
and it has so some of them have they, they have on and off versions of them and for the basic marks to get your basic mark take 200 of these randomly chosen configurations and try them against all the benchmarks and use the same configurations against each benchmark don't generate random ones for each benchmark because then you won't be able to compare them okay make sure you annoyed voice uh, 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 annoyed voice make sure you avoid noise uh, as Pablos has so eloquently described so far uh, there is noise in these things uh, and you need to make sure that you account for these if you are doing this on your home computer, make sure that you are not also playing Doom in the background. Does anybody play Doom anymore? Is that is that a thing? What's know. the latest? What is the latest version of this? Flappy Bird. I don't know what people do. I don't know. I think they play Grand Theft Auto Five. Grand Theft Auto Five. Okay. Uh, don't play Grand Theft Auto Five whilst you are trying to get timing measurements on this stuff. It will significantly bugger up your computer. The, the timing measurements that you get. If you're doing this on dice, make sure that the machine is just dedicated to you that you're not doing other things with it and do not run stuff over AFS because the network bandwidth will mess with what's going on use uh, disk scratch or the temp directory okay but make sure make sure you save your results there will be no sympathy for people who say I lost my results for any reason it, dogs do not eat computer results uh, it turns out or at least not very often Okay, and in order to deal with the noise, make sure that you run at least 10 times for each benchmark and each optimization setting that you get so that you can at least average out the results you get to deal with some of this noise. Now, I say at least, right, because this is not a very sound way to deal with noise. You may decide when you are thinking about how you are going to extend beyond this to get your higher mark that you will do something more rigorous for uh, noise stuff. But, Pablos, we're going to come to that at the end, right? I bet you've got some ideas on this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got I'll, I'll tell you. Okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Just you don't need to tell them exactly what to do, though, right? Because <laughs> this is for the students to work out themselves. Yeah. Do not go and see Pavlos. Right, Pavlos, if any of these students come to see you and say, please, Mr. Pavlos, can you tell me what I should do to get a high mark, right? What are you going to say? <sighs> Um, you can say I'm an internet sensation. You can't talk to me. Talk to my bouncer. No, more, more likely I'll say show me the money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, make sure you have a fat wallet if you're going to come and talk to Pavlos. Uh, by the way, just in case anybody's listening, that is a joke. Yeah, I'm <laughs> <Sorry>. joking. <laughs> Unless it's a lot of money, <laughs> in which case uh, it needs to be enough for both of us to retire. Okay, so um, uh, yes, so you uh, so you probably might want to do something else to determine what's the smallest number, of, what, what, how many measurements you actually need, but it should probably be at least 10. And you will want to compute and report the average, uh, the variance, uh, and the number of iterations that you ended up using. Okay? Make sense? Yep. Okay, Pavlos is happy with this. All right. Uh, also, Pavlos, I know how uh, when you do compilation experiments, uh, you sit there and manually type in, in each compilation setting, wait for it to finish, and then set the next one going, right? Is that why it takes so long? So yeah. why it takes so long for you? Uh, it's, I don't always do it like that. You so, don't always so, do that? So, sometimes I just hire someone to press the keys all the time. <laughs> to press the keys, okay. That's a very good way of doing it. But an even better way, part of us, is to use a scripting language. What yeah? is that, Hugh? What is a scripting language? <laughs> well, um, it's clearly not Python, right? Because that's a language that nobody should use. Is that right? Do you agree with me on that? You should, you should definitely use a functional programming language, I think. Yeah, should we, should we digress into No, we probably shouldn't. Any scripting language you like, as long as you can run these things. Here are some example pseudocode. This is very, very stripped down. Obviously, there is going to be slightly more to it than this. But for each of the benchmarks, here we go, for each benchmark, and for each optimization in your set of pre-chosen optimizations, compile that benchmark with that optimization, run it some number of times, and record the runtime. Calculate the average and store that information somewhere sensible so that you can put it into your report. Okay? Mm -hmm. Easy peasy. You could probably do this in Python, couldn't yeah, you? Yeah, I guess when you... Even, even Python would do this. When you say optimizations, I guess you mean... Uh Groups of optimizations. Yes, 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 yes. This is Not your set of optimizations. This is your command line, which contains multiple on and off things, right? So each yeah. good, good call. Yes, uh, with with optimize. This is an optimization setting, that is set sets of flags. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good call. All right. So that all sounds nice and easy. There are a few things, as I say, you will need to cope with in order for the errors that we talked about earlier to make sure those are trapped and things like that uh, and so forth. But essentially, the programming is relatively straightforward. So we have some benchmarks from the Spec CPU 2006 benchmark suite, uh, which might sound 10 years old. Oh, my God, is that really old? Uh, yes, it is. But it turns out that if you use modern ones, they take bloody ages to run. So this way, at least, there's a decent chance that you might have it complete. Uh, and also, some of the benchmarks come from the Media Bench 2 bench. Uh, sorry, Media Bench. I did just say that. Media Bench yeah. 2 benchmark suite. Okay. So some from each. Um, and uh, there are 14 of them. Now, 
it may be that one of them does not work, but I can't remember which one it is. So if you find that one of them does not work, then don't be terribly upset. Email me, and uh, probably everybody will find it's the same one, right? Yeah, maybe Pavlos will fix it. What do you think? No. Yeah? Good no. plan? Okay, so these are CPU-intensive benchmarks. Uh, they start from real-world ap real applications and be sort of modified slightly in order to get the, uh, the, the thing to be a benchmark. Okay, we've got things like GCC in there. We've got some graphics stuff. I can't remember. There's some, yeah, there's do some you, stuff. Yeah, there are stuff. Uh, you General stuff. I can tell you what Specs Speed 2000 has. But oh, yeah, you probably on. don't give everything. Out. Yeah, yeah, no, go on, go on. Yeah, tell me. So you get... Uh, do you know this off the top of your head? You have compilers and interpreters and uh, graphics applications and uh, uh, earthquake modeling and fluid modeling. And you have X264. Which is what? Video encoding. Video encoding, encoding yeah. And what uh, about Media Bench? Uh, probably yeah, no Media. Idea. Yeah, okay. All right, <laughs> good. So there's a bunch of stuff like that. And you will find that stuff, hopefully, if it's still there, <laughs> you will find it at this link down here. Which uh, where all these things are stashed for you to be able to get to. Uh, all right. th th thank you, Hugh, for providing us with uh, a short URL. What? What do, you, what do you? That would do. Okay, but the, it's clickable in the PDF. How about that? Okay. All right. Um, and uh, so the, the people who don't have the PDF and just are watching this video are screwed. Those people. Well, they they they, they, they can go to my website and they can get it off <laughs> this. This is lecture note two. They can find it and go through it. It's not that hard. <laughs> okay. Uh, you might need more disk space if you are running on dice. Uh, I don't know how much quota they give you, but some of these things are quite big. Uh, do you know how much quota they give students? Probably. And what, how much quota does a student need? Like five, ten bytes, something like that. <laughs> they never produce anything useful, right? <laughs> they need enough to store their username. Okay, okay. Ten bytes. Yes, yes. All right. So um, so you might need some more space. Give me a shout quickly if you do. If you ask me three days before the deadline and say, oh, Hugh, we need more space on our things, right? It's not going to happen. So you're going to be out of luck. This is why um, you will have no sympathy if you start this coursework late in the day, right? Yeah? Pablo, so you're used to giving... I might have... I will direct any comments about this a few days before to Pavlos, who is much less kind than me, and uh, you can be suitably mean to people. Yeah? You're looking forward to that bit? No. <laughs> okay. I, I will be mean, but I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> All right, so in that, in, that, uh, in that download that you get, you will find a bunch of directories uh, where, for example, the spec benchmark suite will have... Uh, things like Perlbench, uh, and inside there you'll find a make file, some data, and a command to run it. Okay, and then you'll find different benchmarks down there like that. Okay, so there we go. So when you compile them, you can force different compilation flags by setting the C flags uh, option into make, which will tell you what flags you want to go in there, and then you can run it with this. Okay. Now, you might need to do some extra work to work out how you are going to time this stuff, uh, but I will leave that to you. That's one of the things that we will be expecting to see in the report, how you did that. Now, the report. Pavlos, you love writing essays, don't you? <laughs> yeah? Everybody does. Yeah, this is why we all became computer scientists, because we enjoyed writing essays so much. It's either for that or because we enjoy interacting with people. <laughs> Yes. One, one of the two. Because we're all such socially wonderful people. Yes, yes. Mm, okay. Uh, right, so... Um, the idea here, though, is that we're going to try and give you practice in doing kind of something that looks a bit like a research paper. So essentially what I want the report to look like is a bit like a research paper. OK, so that means sort of abstract introduction, methodology, experimental setup, uh, experimental results, conclusion, that kind of stuff. Right? Um, OK, the, because I... <laughs> I like reading essays about as much as you like writing them. Uh, so there is an absolute hard maximum of five pages for the stuff that isn't results. OK, and I will probably print them off and I will scrumple up the pages and throw them away if you do more than that. Right. Uh, make sure that you explain what you have done. Uh, precisely describe the architecture and the platform, uh, how you timed things how you did the runs of the benchmarks, how you, what, all the interesting things that you did in order to make it exciting, uh, and make sure you write those down in a way that is clear and easy for me to understand. And when you present the results, try to find interesting ways to visualise the data and things that will make somebody who reads it go, oh, that's quite sexy, that is. I want to give that a high mark. Yeah? Mm -hmm. OK? Because I do like, I like pretty pictures. <laughs> yeah? That's what I like. You like pretty pictures as well, don't you? Yes. We're not going to talk about the pretty pictures that you like, though, because <laughs> this is... Uh, this is before the watershed. <laughs> okay, so um, for every one of the programs, you have to 
present the baseline performance for the standard optimization settings. Tell me which are the best flags you find for each program. The best set of flags across all programs and the average across all flag, flag settings. In other words, what was the random performance? Now, these are minimum requirements, right? Ideally, show me something else interesting as well. And uh, you should detail this per program, average across them, and the variance, okay? Make sense? Pelos, happy? All right. And to make sure that uh, you guys have not cheated, uh, we have a, a sort of automated system that goes through and checks that the type of results that you have produced are in line with the type of results that we expect to see. So we need you to make a file like this, a text file with the name of... Oh, I don't know what's going on there. With the name of the benchmark up here, and then a set of compiler flags that you chose there, followed by, on the same line, a space-separated set of runtimes uh, in milliseconds, as you can probably have. I think I think it's updated now, so you can have floating points if you want, but in, in numbers. But they should be in, in milliseconds. If you want to go down to nanoseconds as well, then they should be floating points. Uh, but uh, there we go. So that's, that's what we should have um, like this. That all makes sense, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, and this checks that uh, that the thing matches with what you've got. And for my sins, you have to email this to me where I will have great fun looking through all this stuff. Uh, wrap it all up in a zip, please, or something like that with all your stuff. Make sure that you have got your user ID, uh, your, your student ID in there as well, because I hate having to go and look these things up on... Um, on whatever the hell it's called, on Euclid, and also tell me your name, uh, because sometimes people use weird IDs and I don't know who they are coming from. Okay, good. Um, the report, as I said earlier, needs to look a bit like a paper, uh, a research paper, so an abstract, an introduction, evaluation methodology, experimental setup, results with these bits and pieces, and some analysis and discussion where you tell me how exciting the things that you've decided to do are, uh, and a conclusion. Okay, if you miss some of these bits out, you get marks knocked off, right? Okay, because that makes it easier for me to mark these things. And every year, people forget to put these things in. And I go, okay, you lose 10% for that, right? Good, right. Um, you have to submit this stuff to the ITO. I don't know who the ITO are. Do you know who the ITO uh, Informatics Teaching Organization? Office. Office. Office, that's it. I don't know where they live. They live somewhere. Yeah. Probably in... in um, Upton Tower? Upton, no, Upton Tower's out of action, isn't it? What's the other one? Forest Hill. Forest Hill, probably in Forest Hill, all right? So uh, you have to deliver the written report to them by that date and time. Do not be late. Uh, I will be looking for clear explanations of experimental results, exciting things you've done, thoroughness of analysis, etc. Uh, and remember that we wish to see the optimization settings that give the best performance per program and the best setting for all benchmarks, okay? Right, uh, you will probably come up with other questions. Uh, if you get them, email me. Uh, don't you email Pavlos. He ha presses the delete on every email. Um, and uh, start early. I can't emphasize that enough. Start early. Oh, and one very, 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 very important thing, right? Which if you forget this, then there will be lots of trouble. Start early. No, well, not just that. <laughs> that, that. That's another one, right? Okay, but here's, a reason, here's another reason why you should start early. So last time people decided quite sensibly that they were going to parallelize the hell out of this stuff. And they took like 20 machines each in the machine halls to run this stuff over. And they took them for like a week each. And that turned out to upset quite a lot of people as there were no machines left for anybody else. OK, so this time, if you're doing this on dice, and by the way, please do this on your own machine at home instead. But if you're doing this on dice, you may not use more than one machine. OK, one machine only. If you're caught using more than one machine and somebody complains, then I will knock off marks for you being bad people and uh, not good citizens and all that kind of stuff. OK, you have been warned. Also, do not use student compute because you have no idea what other bugger is using student compute. And so you will not be sure that the runtimes you're getting are sensible. OK, and just a reminder of the deadline. OK, I think that's it. All right, Paulus, got any ideas of exciting things people can do to make this more exciting? Mm. What would you do? What would you do, Pavlos? Um, I'll just say something. You, you wouldn't. You wouldn't do it anyway, though, would you? You, uh, you, <laughs> you, you? You'd. You'd wait until twenty-four hours before the thing and just go. Yeah, I can't be bothered. Yeah, I'll just plagiarize some results from yeah, uh, the previous yeah. year and send to you. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it turns out that's not going to get you very good. Marks, <laughs> so uh, there is one obvious problem with what you've suggested. All right. Uh, inefficiency. Inefficiency. Oh, yeah. Uh, that we're just testing random flags. Mm. That doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound right, no. What would you do instead? 
Uh, not too much detail, please. Yeah, I don't know. There are various kinds of... If you're searching for something... Oh, ser different search techniques, is that what you're saying? Yeah, if you're searching for something, there are various techniques to search. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And some of them might be applicable to a iterative compilation. Okay, all right. You might also want to think about the noise, uh, how you're dealing with that, right? Because just mm -hmm. doing 10, 10 observations of a thing is not necessarily guaranteed to give you a good noise, mm -hmm. uh, sound, statistically sound results, right? Maybe you might want to... What, what kind of things would you look for, for that? Um, just very briefly, not... Yeah, I don't know. I think the general idea there is that you need uh, enough experiments uh, to be sure that your runtime is uh, between here and there. So some statistical tests or yeah, confidence some, intervals or something, yeah, yeah. Yeah, some stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, they might even, if they're really excited, they might even do some iterative compilation. Mm -hmm. uh, some, oh, sorry, of course they're doing iterative compilation. They might do some machine learning, maybe. Yeah, to guide your search better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what about, uh, do the results look the same on different machines, on different architectures? Could be interesting. Who knows? Could be lots of, could be lots of things, right? Okay, so if you're a really keen student, then there are lots of research papers on this stuff. You can always have a look and see what you think and, um, and maybe try something a little bit more exciting. Okay? Yeah. Good. All right. Woohoo! We're done with the lecture.